hey everybody welcome back to vr anatomy <laughs> that's what we're gonna call it so um we i tried to go to through her slides try to see what was important to highlight or talk about because i don't want to straight up repeat what she's saying but you know i think with these visuals it would be better if like i provide a, a different view to um what she's showing but you know along the same lines as what she's doing and also supplemented to what uh, happens in lecture, of course. So we have our uh, GI tract open. We have our digestive tract open and our parotid gland. Always going to highlight it. Never going to forget it again. Uh, so... We're gonna take off our skeleton, and um, I think the first thing I want to show is that the digestive tract. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you just have to know the names of what it's, what organs it is, and where they are located. Um, first off, what I wanted to show is the peritoneum, and with the peritoneum, we have. Um, organs that are retroperitoneum and organs that are intraperitoneum and that's because um, those organs are completely covered in this thing this um, what is it connective tissue or I think it's mesenteric fat that yeah covers the GI so we we have the peritoneum and um, as I demanded it goes to Ed Parker some of these um, structures are not completely engulfed in the peritoneum, and you can see it in here. So when we look at the colon, we have the ascending, well, we have the descending and ascending colon. And you can see that the peritoneum just covers just to the sides of it. And on these sides, it's not covered. That's why it's part of your retroperitoneum. It's not fully covered in peritoneum. And so is the rectum. Just part of the rectum is uh, covered in peritoneum. If you can see this uh, covering over it. We have a uh, small intestines where it's completely covered except for the duodenum. So when we have our stomach, our esophagus is also not covered in peritoneum. So when our surface co uh, goes into our, connects to our stomach, here it's not showing that the stomach is, but I believe the stomach is fully covered. So is the liver. But when you have your stomach, your stomach goes down and connects to your duodenum. Your duodenum actually exits the peritoneum right there. So, I think that's what um, the retroperitoneum structure of the um, duodenum comes from. It exits the peritoneum, and it's not covered by the peritoneum all the way until the jejunum starts. And this is what she refers to as the ligament of trite, and it's where the duodenum um, connects or becomes the jejunum. And uh, we have a suspensory muscle of the duodenum, and which is basically letting us know that the duodenum, how it just curves and comes back up with a flexure here. It's not just standing up there in itself, just defying gravity. There's something that's just a ligament that's holding it up, and that is what it's responsible for, um, holding the duodenum up, up there. And so is the colon. Um, I think the next thing I want to show is the different ligaments of the GI and how or what runs through those ligaments. So we also have the pancreas. And with the pancreas, you can see that um, the head. The head is out of it, just like how it's connected to the duodenum, it's outside the um, peritoneum, and 
think the tail, if you can see the peritoneum, covers the tail of, or is it just on the border? Because um, the T in said fucker is saying that the pancreas is. The pancreas is not fully covered in peritoneum. And that's the tail part is what's connected in the peritoneum. So I thought this would be something to show. So you have your duodenum curving downwards. Um, the first part is in the peritoneum and everything else is not. Then your jejunum becomes and is in the peritoneum. You have your small intestines, you have your large colon, ascending, descending, which is outside the peritoneum. Then you have your rectum. Uh, so, well, we have a liver, gallbladder, all in the peritoneum. Okay, now I'm going to go into a small structure mode where we could see like most of the things all right let's see so as it's saying over there the peritoneum is responsible for the support of many of the abdominal organs and serves as a conduit for uh, their blood vessels and um oh so it'll all be lying on the ground in our feet yeah never mind um so i think the first one i wanted to show the suspensory muscle of the duodenum holding the duodenum then we have our ligament of trites right there duodenal flexure then we have a peritoneum then we have a jejunum Digenome goes into a uh, ileum. This is the cecum, and we have the uh, ileocecal valve. I'm gonna go in and show it. So this would be our ileal orifice, where the ileum joins the cecum, and that will be our appendix, right next to um. Oh, is it? Cecum and T is what you want to see. Appendix is a little bit more inside. That will be uh, orifice of verifum appendix. And as we know, our appendix is a diverticulum. It's one of uh, one of the normal true diverticulum we have in our body. We have our ileum, we have our cecum, and uh. Uh, the terminal ileum is where vitamin B12 is absorbed. That way, um, B12 and intrinsic factor complex. So, uh, we have to maybe we can. We'll go reverse. <laughs> Through. Okay, now this is becoming very trippy. Right, let me exit. We have our pancreas. You have a stomach. Okay, now I want to bring in the blood vessels. And with the blood vessels, we will see, um, where is the spleen? So our spleen is through our blood vessels. So we're going to get that. All right. Maybe not. Maybe it's with lymphatics. Okay. There we go. So we see our splenic artery here. And we have our pancreas. And here it's saying the splenic artery runs behind the pancreas. But I think it's supposed to run behind uh, the posterior aspect of the stomach. When you get an ulcer in the posterior aspect of the stomach, it and it perforates through the um 
the mucosal barrier, it can damage the splenic artery in the posterior aspect. If it's at the left side curvature, it's going to put damage your left gastric, which runs in front of your uh, lesser curvature. And we have our right gastric there, which is also supplying that side. So what I wanted to show is that with your splenic artery running behind here and you get an ulcer here um, and it perfect, it can damage the blood vessels and it can have internal bleeding. And also it can also damage the pancreas because the pancreas also runs um, right behind the same section. Now this ligament that they both run in, they don't show it. So they will show it if I put it on. Let me toss this off and toss connective tissue. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's not what we wanted. So we're gonna put you away and keep our arteries there. But so yeah, with the digestive tract. Or it just helps if you know where the names of it, then you can compartmentalize what 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 is where. Then when you're able to do that, then the arteries will follow and they should be self explanatory except for the ones with like gastroepiploic and gastric, the differentiating between where they are. You know, one the name of one is short, so it will be on the short side of the stomach and the gastroepiploic name is long and would be on the long side of the um, stomach so get my um, bearings here so we have our short left gastric on our stomach and we have our why are you always in the way we have our right gastroepiploic those would be the gastric branches, a tear branch, but the main one is this bad boy, which is the gastroepiploic on the right side and the gastroepiploic on the left side. Oops, nope. That would be this one. It's coming off of, okay. So we have a uh, gastroepiploic artery and what is good to know that all these ones will have little um branches that will supply different aspects of the of the stomach all right now let's get our bearings okay so we have our stomach uh our first big artery of the stomach will be our splenic, our celiac trunks, and our celiac trunk. What is? Why do they spell it like that? We're gonna put a O in there. We'll give off our first gastro gastric artery, and it also gives off our splenic. We goes to the spleen, and it has our common hepatic artery. Now, our common hepatic artery. Will then become our proper hepatic artery. You see where it turns into proper hepatic artery. And so for a while, just maybe it doesn't say it. Cystic artery. So we know our common hepatic artery becomes our proper hepatic artery, which will give off our gastro or well, it bifurcates to this part where it becomes it gives off gastro duodenal artery this continues on as our proper hepatic artery and that will the proper hepatic artery is the one that would give off our right gastric artery right because it comes off of it then it supplies the right side of the lesser curvature if we go below let me not get us confused if we go below, we have this one will be our right gastric, as we said, and the common hep hepatic gives off gastroduodenal, which will run in front of the head of the pancreas, right? 
that will follow where it's going to run. I don't want it to be anymore. So, we have gastro, gastro duodenal artery. Right? It will give off the posterior, superior pancreatic called duodenal artery. And our, it will also give off the other one, the anterior one, but not yet. So, we are on our common hepatic artery. We leave off the common hepatic artery. And we're on a gastroduodenal artery now. And we go down. It gives off our anterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery, which will anastomose with our uh, anterior inferior pancreatic duodenal artery coming off of the SMA. So is the posterior one. So gastroduodenal, then it gives off the gastroepiploic artery. So once it gives up the gastroepiploic artery, let me move out of the mess, this mess. Let me pin you somewhere over there. So it gave off our gastroepiploic, and that will supply the greater curvature, the right side of the greater curvature. And, um, who are you? And what do you want? So mental branches. All right. So yeah, that is that with the um, with the stomach. The stomach also has other branches. So we'll go out. We'll make it more cleanly looking. So it's not confusing. All right. So we'll reset, we'll toss out our lymph so it's not confusing, we're out of the way. We'll go from the back side. Yeah. All right. So we had our cilia trunk, and our cilia trunk gave off our um, splenic artery. And also give off our left gastric, which will give off our esophageal branch of the left esophagus, which will supply the lower and third of the esophagus. So with the splenic artery, we'll go into the spleen, and if we toss in our spleen, we'll go in there and give it uh, its blood supply. So we have our lovely short gastric here and our left gastroepiploic artery. So our left gastroepiploic comes up and curves out that way and supplies the left side of the greater curvature. Now if we go back, we'll see that our short gastric goes up and uh, supplies the fundus of the stomach. So there you have it with the stomach and its supply. You know, the pancreas is behind it. So if there's any uh, pathology with um, the stomach is going to affect our splenic artery if it's back here in our pancreas if it's a uh, um, chronic gastritis or uh, an ulcer it's going to happen at the lesser curvature of the stomach and you know that's going to affect our left gastric which, which um, it runs right there and it's the most common um artery to be uh, damaged when that also happens in the body of the stomach. So, um, that is it with the stomach. Um, I think she just goes into the duodenum and talks about the duodenum. Now let me, um, let me toss this off and see if it's any better no that would be harder to see but we know where things are now so we had our gastro epiploic and i think this was the mental branches our mental arteries so our peritoneum our mental receives blood supply 
and it's good to know that they receive blood supply, which branches off of the gastroepiploic artery. Did not know that, but let's focus on these ones, right? These would be for our duodenum and our pancreas, because the head of the pancreas curves right there, and that's where the anterior and the posterior will supply, right? So we would have our duodenum naturally. Our duodenum will be there, and that would supply it. So if we toss it off, you can see that only the um, the blood supply. Now, let me find anterior, inferior. This is what I was literally trying to find. Yes. And posterior, inferior. So you see how we have our anterior superior and an posterior superior coming off of our gastro um, duodenal artery. We also have our anterior inferior and posterior inferior pancreatic duodenal, which will come off of the SMA, which is the superior mesenteric artery, and that will branch from, I think, L2. This is uh, L1, T12, L1. It's about L2 here. Don't quote me on that. Um, no, this is still L1. Yeah, this branches off of L1. I know there's no branch until L3, which would be our inferior, wherever it is, whenever it wants to get found. Anyways, superior mesenteric artery will give off our inferior, anterior, and posterior inferior pancreatic duodenal, which will announce the most with the anterior superior and posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery so those will help together um supply the together supply the they didn't really change anything only took off the momentum i guess that's better um will supply the pancreas and the duodenum because they all need supply that's um, straight arteries. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so that is that for uh, pancreas. I think it had uh, other branches, posterior, superior. The duodenum had a a single branch coming off of somewhere, and I noticed that. Oh, we're gonna get to you later. Okay, so let's not get lost. So I think she was going down in order, and she had mentioned. I think she may have mentioned one, uh, other artery, which supplied the duodenum. But as she was going down, you know, we have a, a celiac trunk, and right next to our celiac trunk, we have the middle suprarenal artery, and that one will supply our kidneys. So if we toss on our kidney, we'll see our middle suprarenal will knock our kidney, our suprarenal adrenal gland. So the adrenal gland, what I learned is that it has three blood supplies and it has the most blood supply when you compare it to the size of the organ. So it has the superior suprarenal artery which comes from the inferior phrenic artery right um and that would obviously uh diaphragm and you have your middle 
suprarenal artery, which is coming from your celiac, or not celiac, your abdominal aorta. And lastly, you're going to have your inferior suprarenal artery, which comes from your renal artery. So you have three different arteries supplying the re suprarenal gland, and it has three different um, locations where it comes from. So that's something interesting to note. Um, I don't know why she mentioned it, but not doing kidney. Oh, what did I talk about? So next we have our super superior mesenteric, and that is um also pretty straightforward if you know what it gives off. So we have our middle colic, um, this is our marginal artery of Drummond. Of course, so uh superior mesenteric will have our jejunal branches, which will supply what the, as the name says, it's gonna have the iliac branches too. Yep, it has the ilia branches coming off, supplying the ilia. And then it's going to have the iliocolic artery, which will supply the ilium and the colon. Let me see if I could toss it on and it wouldn't get confusing. Lost you. Get the top down. So we'll look at it from the posterior end, and I think that's easier. You have your iliac branch of the iliocolic artery, and you have your iliocolic artery supplying the areas of your ilium and your colon. And if you have our iliac branches, we should have our colic branch. Yep, colic branch of the iliocolic artery, which will supply uh, the cecum and um, most of the ascending colon and then branch of the right colic artery. So we have our right colic, which will supply our ascending uh, column. And we have our middle colic, or right here it says it, middle colic, which will supply the transverse colon, or oh, proximal two thirds of the transverse colon. And it also contributes to the marginal artery of Drummond. Um, then, Where did I, where did I go? Oh, I'm behind it. All right, nice. Uh, last but not least, we have inferior mesenteric artery. Yeah, blanking there for a second. Superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric. I know you're in here somewhere. You can't hide from me. There you go. So we talked about jejunal branches, iliac branches, yeah, uh, right colic, middle colic, iliac colic, all coming off of our superior mesenteric, the iliac branch, superior curving down. It's gonna have these. Uh, Arcades and um, a jejunal artery arcades and supply all the small intestines and give them all the uh, blood that it needs. Uh, straight arteries of the jejunum. So that's pretty straight. We have superior mesenteric, ileo, iliocolic. That now I want to move to inferior mesenteric without any skip so we have our inferior mesenteric which will give off right away our left colic artery which will supply uh the descending colon of um of our colon so left colic giving off our ascending branch of our left colic which is going to contribute to this marginal artery and a marginal artery of german which she says it's a watersh watershed zone and um if there is a 
an obstruction or a damage to one of these mesenteric arteries, you're going to lose blood supply to this area from one side, whichever side that it's, it's damaged. So ascending branch, this will probably be a descending branch. Then we have a sigmoidal uh, arcades of sigmoidal um, arteries, which will obviously, as the name suggest, uh, says, will supply the sigmoid um, colon. Let's uh, find testicular artery. Okay. Uh, so the testicular artery branches off of the abdominal aorta. Um, I think when we were in the anatomy table, it was one of the questions that was about testicular artery um obviously i skipped lecture so i didn't see it but when i watched the lecture i don't remember any specific emphasis but yeah one of the arteries that branches off the abdominal aorta and runs all the way along so that's cool uh, we have uh sigmoid branches of uh um superior mesenteric and we're gonna have our rectal branch superior rectal and once i find that probably makes sense to have that back on go to the rectum and we have our internal iliac artery and what without the internal iliac artery give us it will give Internal pedendo, right? Where are you? Can't be found. Okay. So we have our middle rectal artery coming off of our inferior internal iliac artery anterior trunk and the soup internal pudendal artery we finally found you so internal iliac artery gives off the internal pudendal artery right the internal pudendal artery will run down and give off this special inferior rectal artery which supplies the uh lower portion of the rectum uh specifically behind below the pectinate line so inferior rectal will take care of that but it also amass the most with the superior rectal artery which for some reason does not want to show me where it is it's fine because that will come off of our superior mesenteric mm. thought that was hope when I saw the superior but can't can't stop on stuff gonna get it there we go finally so we have our inferior mesenteric artery which will give off our superior rectal artery and will supply the top part of the sigmoid colon and our rectum and then we'll announce the most with uh, inferior rectal which is coming off of um, our internal pudendal nerve we have our internal pudendal nerve and our internal pudendal nerve is coming from our internal 
iliac artery, which is coming from our systemic circulation. So there is an anastomose here and there. So. And um, that has like dual blood supply, right? So for the veins, it's pretty straightforward. Is the same as the arteries with a couple of different things. So how the in inferior rectal is supplying So yeah, it work in reverse. How our arteries are supplying the same, our venous drainage will also be doing the same. And because the inferior rectal artery is coming off of our systemic circulation, that could be very serious here if there is a um a portal hypertension in um the uh, portal circulation, which the superior rectal artery connecting to the inferior mesentery connecting to um, our no, I want to say splenic vein uh, will, it will come in from our portal so we could follow the inferior mesentery and if I'm not wrong we'll see what it connects to uh, no splenic yep, so I was right so inferior mesentery connects to the splenic vein and that connects to the superior mesenteric to form the uh connects to superior mesenteric to form hepatic portal vein so um it doesn't connect to the ivc right away it connects to the portal vein and then becomes portal circulation so there could be very easy if there is a portal hypertension uh, due to uh, yeah, portal hypertension at the um, rectum. So that's one of them. There's another one in the esophagus. Sternophrenic. So I left gastric or anastomose with uh so for your branch of the uh left gastric and you have infiophrenic vein. And I thought it was these two that um anastomose for also for geo rarities used to happen. But if there's like backflow in um the left gastric it's gonna cause esophageal varices in the lower one third and then you're gonna have your painless hematomesis and all that but i'm gonna go look up to see if uh it's the esophageal branch of the left gastric and the inferior phrenic vein that's causing but i know it's the backup of the left gastric which creates the very seas in the esophagus. Uh, one more thing it is too important to note with uh, the veins is that if, let me pull this off and uh, put urogenital, okay. Uh. So, we have our spermatic cord, right? Internal spermatic fascia, and this would be our inguinal canal if uh, all the structures was here, were here, but 
task. We're going to look at our at the vein. Let me see if it's this vein. Interesting. So left of the gastric. So you have our renal vein and you have our testicular vein on the left. And what, what's interesting is that our testicular vein can be pressed. Mm, let me see. The pure mesenteric vein. There's a other renal vein in between and splenic vein, superior mesenteric vein. Well, what is relevant here is that this vein can be compressed between this abdominal aorta and another um, structure that would typically be found here. So that could cause like a, um, a blockade of this uh, testicular or left testicular vein to drain into the renal vein because it has to go all the way across and dump into the IVC, right? It has to wrap around the abdominal aorta to dump into the IVC. So on the left side, there could be um, backup of that. If there's not proper drainage in the one that's highlighted in white, it can cause a varicocele varicocele in the sperm spermatic cord so that is interesting to note um and on the right side i think it connects directly to the ivc if you can notice so we have a gigantic ivc and we have a testicular vein that can it goes all the way down so um typically fine and wouldn't have the same uh, relevance or significance as the one on the left so uh, that's pretty much with the veins besides that everything should be uh, similar to the arteries if you can remember what the arteries does you could just think of it uh, in a backwards way to connect it to the vein except for when you're dealing with your portal veins and you have um your renal vein okay so one thing it is of interest to know so let me see this is your splenic artery your splenic vein let me see what the splenic vein is so your splenic vein connects to your um superior mesenteric vein then becomes your common uh your hepatic portal vein right so Let's say you have portal hypertension and you can't uh, have proper drainage from your spleen. So you're, you're getting um, probably like bleeding or blood, blood backflow into your spleen. You can ligate this spleen, splenic vein, which connects to the superior um, mesenteric vein. You ligate it off and you cut it, you ligate it and you're like, okay. I don't want it to go in here. It's causing um, backflow into my spleen, into the spleen. So you want to connect it somewhere. Well, you could connect it to the IVC, but the way you connect it to the IVC is you would bring it down from here and you connect it to the left renal vein. And when you connect it to the left renal vein, you have bam, it goes into your IVC. No portal hypertension um, going into your spleen. Your spleen is fine now. So those are the um, few relevant things about the vein when it comes to the portal um, uh, drainage. You have your the one with the spleen where you can splenic artery vein where you can take it and put it in the left renal vein. Your varicocele that could happen from your testicular vein connecting to your left renal vein. Um, you have your internal and external hemorrhoids that can happen below or above the pectinate line with your inferior uh, renal, rectal 
inferior rectal vein and your superior rectal vein and you have your esophageal varices that could happen as well so that's pretty much it with um drainage oh i guess one thing we didn't talk about would be let's see besides the vein of you go you go you on and the lymphatics the lymphatics not be too terrible they are pretty prop um named after like the locations and names of the arteries that are already there so gastric what is your name superior gastric lymph nodes you know exactly where it is because superior gastric lymph nodes right in the name what are you Superior pancreatic lymph nodes. What is the pancreas? Oh, right there. Superior pancreatic lymph nodes. So, say there's a cancer in celiac lymph nodes. There's a cancer in the stomach. What can it spread to? It can spread to the gastric and the celiac lymph nodes. You know, uh, stuff like that. So, that's also pretty straightforward. Um, your innovations. Your innovations is um, the pretty much the only tricky or part of things that you have to memorize so we are in our gi let me toss it off so we don't get lost so if you're looking i'm right in front of the esophagus and we have our stomach i can't get this off but i'll just go in we receive our parasympathetic uh, innovation from uh, for the GI uh, from the vagus nerve, which is um, cranial nerve ten. And interesting is that thing is that the vagus nerve. I said it in one of the previous videos that it runs both anterior and posterior to the esophagus, and does to the um, what's your name, the stomach. So we have. Where did it go? This was your branch. So we have the left vagus ner uh, nerve, which looks like it's poking into the um, esophagus, is going to run, if I toss the esophagus out, it's going to run anterior to the esophagus and anterior to the stomach. So your left vagal um, vagus nerve will give you anterior vagal trunk and your posterior uh, where is it right here you no I lost you come back so right here posterior vagal right mm -hmm. whoops so your right vagus nerve oh my god it's gone right there your right vagus nerve will run posterior to your esophagus and your stomach and will give off your posterior vagal trunk. So, that will provide your um, parasympathetic innervation to your posterior, no, to your um, upper two thirds of the GI and your pelvic. Your pelvic plexus. I don't know if I can find it here. Uh, no. So we have our lumbar. Lumbar splashnik. 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 Ulgrush. Find you. Find you. Find you. Find you, I will. But I can't find you right now. But yeah, um, I'll keep looking for it. But our pelvic splatnik, um, nerve plexus will provide parasympathetic innervation for our hindgut, so our lower GI um, areas from where, if you think about it, the hindgut hindgut starts. So pelvic splatnik. 
P for para, uh, P for parasympathetic, P for pelvic splashnik, and then for your um, upper GI, you're gonna receive your sympathetic innovations from your body. And let me try to find it. Yep, found it. So you're gonna find from your vagus, from your greater. Yep, greater. Let me see if I can find a luster. So our sympathetic trunk, so our greater and our lesser uh, splashnik will come off of our sympathetic trunk and our sympathetic trunk forms right there, right along the esophagus. So if I brought in our skeleton, so our, the nerves, our fibers um, leave the spinal cord and when they leave for our sympathetic trunk, for our sympathetic uh, nervous system, um, there is a trunk that forms along from T1 to L2 or L3, and that will be our sympathetic trunk, and then will give up all our um, nerve plexuses. So these are the sympathetic nervous system. <laughs> Sympathetic, excuse me, sympathetic nervous system of our sympathetic or for our GI. And it gives up the greater and the lesser. Yep, found your. And that will provide. Where am I going? That will provide innovation or these plexuses will give up innovation to sympathetic innovation to our upper GI then um, for the lower GI what will provide sympathetic innovation is our lumbar plexus which we found to be this oh maybe not can't find it now but um i want to say one one of the pictures that she had on her slides was um it was marking which part of the gi is innovated by which um number of um nerve like t1 t2 so it started from it's t5 to t12 or t l1 whichever one that she wants to show us depending on the day um it started from, I think, so it was T6 and T9, right? There's no 7. Then once you go, yeah, it's probably confusing. So I think that one of that's one of the slides on her, uh, pictures on the slides that I found re really helpful to know which number corresponds to which GI because this will not let us see specifically. Oh, what is What are you? Hepatic plexus. Of course, we know who you are. But yeah, I won't take any more of your time. This is pretty much everything that we need to know for GI. The looks like I remembered something. Let me see. Okay, so clearly do know posterior. So they're not showing it now, but she said anatomically there's gonna be a uh, pyloric branch off of the nerve. One of the um, oof. There's gonna be a pyloric branch. Of the artery and that tells us that we are at the uh, pyloric sphincter for yeah the pyloric sphincter but yeah that's pretty much OGI nerves 
if you remember P4, parasympathetic when it comes to the lower uh, abdomen, you should be golden. But yeah, let me know if I missed anything. I will go back into the human form and uh, yeah, it was good talking to y'all and studying together. Uh, peace out. Um, happy studying.